let's pinch the barb as we get ready to mount this hook and device. On this scud hook, we'll mount it so that it seems to set fairly flat. However, the curved shank of the hook makes it difficult to identify any particular flat spot as a shank. But anyway, we'll start our thread just behind the hook eye. Leave some space there so there's room later for the head of the fly when we get there. Now we're going part of the way around the bend. And how far is part of the way? Well, when you pull the taut thread forward, the point of the hook and the taut thread would, should form about a 45 degree angle. Now, momentarily, while I trim off the waist thread, I'm just going to advance this thread to, and let it hang here in the center of the, of the shank. But we're going to move it to the back of the hook here in just a moment. I have a short segment of tinsel that I've removed from the bobbin of tinsel, and we're just going to tie that on the bottom of the shank and start wrapping forward. I keep that on the bottom of the shank by giving it a little twist with my fingers as I wind forward. It's kind of important to keep it there though. That's one of the things your evaluator will be looking for is that the tinsel is on the bottom of the, sh of the hook shank. Okay, now we'll get up here. We're going to call this the end of the body right here where I'm pointing with my scissors. We'll pull this back out of the way and get to it here in just a few minutes. I'm going to also tie several strands of goose hurl and that hurl comes from the wing feather being referred to it as fibers, but anyway, we'll have that tied to the bottom of the hook shank as well. Now I'll wrap the goose hurls forward to meet the thread. And we have to make, they have a tendency to want to twist, and I want to make sure that they remain flat as I advance each turn. I'll hold it in place with my trigger finger here on the left trigger finger so that I can work it around that thread. Making certain that I get all of the fibers to lay flat. Got to be really careful in those first couple turns. It really wants to twist. And that will make a body that's not smooth and that's something that your evaluator will be concerned about. And you should be as well. So let's make our last turn here. I'm going to actually take that last turn up into the thorax area, just a small amount so that I can get a good clean tie off on that. And I'll uh, just do that with a couple of turns of thread. And we'll trim away the waist. And I'm going to grab the rib material. And we're going to counter wrap, some call it reverse wrap, the rib material. And it's really important that you get evenly spaced turns and the number of turns is not indicated in the recipe, but what we're looking for is about five turns. So I think that's what you should shoot for on the pattern that you're developing for your evaluator. Well, let's make sure that I haven't caused a problem here, and I'll count those. One, two, three, four, five. I got six, so I'm going to have to do that over. And that's all right. And we'll just open those turns up just a little bit. Four. Five. And we'll tie that off. All right, and trim away the waist. And will take care of the ribbon. Let me make certain that I Got the correct number of turns before I go further. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we've got it. 
The wing case is made from another slip of that turkey, and you notice that it has kind of a curve on it. It curves down, and what I really want to do is get back into the flatter area for my wing case, so I'm going to tie that on so that the waist portion is that curved portion. Make that flat. Now, before we stop, let's make sure by pulling over that we've wrapped back far enough, and we haven't. We want to get back into the little bit further. I'll pull that forward and see if that's going to... Yes, that looks very good. Okay, we'll trim away the waist. Now it's time to add several strands of peacock curl for the thorax. And I think I've got about four here. This is a little bit larger hook than, than some. You'll use a couple on a smaller hook and a few more on a larger hook. I'm going to tie these in by the tip and I'm going to trim that off even before I attach that to the bottom of the hook shank. And I'll wrap forward. And I don't want to go too far forward. I want to make sure that I have space here at the front to later um, have a head. You don't want to crowd the head. That's one of the things that your evaluator will be looking for. And I'm just going to advance this forward without twisting it around anything. As we learn more and get further into this course, we'll learn more about wrapping peacock curl to strengthen it with thread and wire and so forth. And notice that I wrapped over that a couple times. It just wasn't filling in as good as it could, and I went ahead and wrapped over it a couple times just to fill that in a little bit better. It'll make that look like it should. Now let me trim away the waist. And wrap a couple of thread turns there just to cover up that waist. Now let me press forward on these goose fibers that are going to form the, the wing case. Pull that snug and take a couple turns of thread to anchor that in place. Now before I get too far down, let's turn the vise a little bit so we can make certain that we have a good straight wing case. And in my case, or in this situation, it needs to be pushed forward just slightly on that one side. And now I'll bind it in place. And to keep a nice even head without a lot of waste in it, I'm going to trim these fibers off a few at a time rather than all at once. I'll strip those out of there. and This makes a cleaner cut when you do a few at a time instead of all at once. All right, now I'll just go ahead and build a thread head. Grab our whip finish tool. It's time to trim away the waist, and that completes the fly. Now it's time for me to switch roles, and I'm going to take a look at an evaluator's sheet, and instead of being a fly tire, I'm going to evaluate my own fly. And um, the first thing on the sheet, it says overall appearance and proportions. I'm going to say that's fairly good and not, down, not take any points off for that. Consistency, do all the flies look alike? Well, in this particular case, we only have one to look at. When you actually send three in to your evaluator, then you'll be able to identify whether the, your flies look consistent or not, and your evaluator will be looking for that. Material selection, we use the materials exactly as described in the recipe, so we're good on that. The body, the body looks good, smooth. The ribbing. The ribbing is uh, evenly placed. 
I had a little trouble with it. There's one spot that I don't think it's as good as it should be, so I'm knocking a point off of of, of my application of that rib. Even though it's five turns and it's uh, evenly spaced, it just isn't quite as good as it could have been. The thorax. Thorax is proportioned about like it should. However, I'm not really pleased with the distribution of the peacock in that thorax. I'm knocking off a point. I think the wing case looks pretty good. Here, I bought my camera. I don't want to do that. The wing case looks pretty good. I'll take a look at it from all sides here. And um, I'm pleased with that. I'm not knocking anything off of that. The head looks like it's proportioned about like it should be. So there's no points off of that. So was it perfect? No, but the fly uh, would have passed uh, inspection of the evaluator, at least this evaluator myself. And I would assume most other evaluators will look at it with the, with the same um, general attention to detail.